Okay, welcome everybody. Is going to start with something just a little bit different here today. This is the Russell 2000. Now that's total return. Give me a second. Give me the real Russell. Almost the same. Um, here's the Russell 2000. You can see on here is a two hour chart, two hours, ultimate direction, two hour indicator, or just you can think of it as a two hour indicator, but it only works. Um, this indicator was specifically, directional indicator is specifically designed for the two hour chart. Okay. So, you can see here it's been red, 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 red. A okay, big old red. Um, and then there's been, a, you know, obviously on the two hour chart here for the Russell 2000, the end, this is the index now. So the index only, you can see only trades intraday. So the gray areas are obviously overnight, right? And you can see this thing's been running up the last uh, two, let's see, uh, this would be Monday session, today's Tuesday. So it's been running up for about two sessions, Monday and Tuesday here. Okay. Now, um, momentum's still pretty negative here. Here's momentum at the zero line. We're down here, at negative momentum's this, you know, down here. So this is looking like the Russell's 2000s getting ready to pull back. So the reason why I'm showing this, let me switch over to another screen. Okay, so here's my trade that I made. This was actually uh, kind of late last night. I was up, made $515. I just kept the position pretty small here. Uh, two um, E-mini Russell contracts. This, these are futures, not options. For those that may not be familiar, this is uh, futures uh, contracts, not, not options. So I just took advantage of, you could see the Russell 2000 came up, started to pull back here a little bit. I took advantage of this little dip right here. Yeah, that's right. This little dip, just like, Whatever this was, small little dip. I think I grabbed like eight points or whatever it was. Okay. Maybe maybe a little less, don't remember, but this is basically where I made my profit. And then got out this morning. I calculated there was going to be a bounce, and there was, and got out. It's really important that, you know, the previous screen we looked at, the previous symbol, the Russell 2000, that's the one you want to be looking at. That's true for the NDX or the SPX. So, you know, I'm, what I'm trying to convey here, especially to the members is, as you're looking at those charts that I send to you every night in the email, it's really important to understand those two hour charts are gonna help drive your, your trading. So I use the, the um, you know, the intraday indexes on the two hour chart with a directional indicator to help me place a trade in the futures and make some bank, right, cha-ching. Okay, I'm still working on trying to get the stream up and running, especially for those two-hour charts. I'm having a little problem with one of my computers, so I'm not sure what's going on. I'm still working on it, okay? But hopefully that's going to come online soon. Meantime, just make sure you look at those charts in the nightly email. It can really help you prepare for your, your day to trade, okay? Very, very powerful charts. So you can see I took temp uh, took advantage of a little temporary weakness here overnight as it did one of these little dipsy doos and I anticipated um, either Tuesday or Wednesday that on the Russell 2000 index, let's go back to it, I anticipated um, back here that Monday or Tuesday, two or three sessions worth, that this would eventually peak out and begin to start a rollover. Well, that's pretty much where we're at. Now, the market just closed for intraday. It's about 3.30 here my time. Uh, for Texas, you know, the market pretty much closes at 3 o'clock, 3.15, whatever. Okay. So this is probably going to begin to roll over here. So obviously this is only index, the Russell 2000, just like the NDX and the SPX, only those indexes are only active during the intraday hours. Okay. But you'd be amazed how those indexes really do keep you in a trade. I mean, look at this. Keeps you in the trade, <laughs> okay? And then, like I said, you can either use options, you can use futures. You know, there's other, other products that you can use to trade and profit off of what the index is doing, right? I mean, everybody knows this, but just for kind of maybe new members who are not really sure how to do this, Okay, you've got choices, right? You can you can use your futures products or you can use your options products to take advantage of the three indexes. Primarily, is how it's done. 
right? So I anticipate that the Russell 2000 is going to pull back here. Now, I don't normally cover this in a, in a video because this stuff is that I'm showing here, this directional indicator, the two hour chart, all this is reserved for members, but I'm just going to show it occasionally. So, you know, the members understand, you know, how I'm using it, how you saw how I made some money last night. And, um, of course, you know, it's promotional for my service for anybody who wants to become a member. They can see the, you know, how this is being done and how money's being made. Okay. All right, so let's move on with our regularly scheduled video. All right, so this is the daily. I'm not gonna show the weekly because not much has changed. And again, members, you can always get the weekly and all five charts in your nightly email. So make sure you read, you look at your emails and read, read the emails, okay? Um, not much going on here today. A range of only 21 and a quarter on the S&P 500. Um, it did hit another all-time high today, just squeaking out a new all-time high. Okay, didn't fill the gap. I thought there might be a small possibility of filling the gap, but such is not the case. Now, the SMI is really up here. It's at 85. This is super high right now. Okay, and the MACD isn't particularly super high. It, it really could go higher. Right now, it's at, um, at 69 so there's room to go this this could get all the way up into the 80s so you know my best guess here on the sp 500 is that we're going to see another three or four or five days something like this in this uh kind of gone to the moon thingy <clears throat> and and then i think we might see it you know maybe it's up to 50 above 5600 and starts to do a little rollover we'll see like i said yesterday i nothing's changed yet and it may not change but nothing uh, it could start to follow um, the Dow Jones and the Russell 2000. Usually it will eventually start giving it up. Let me take, you know, and since we're, okay, so that's the daily, there's July 10th. I do think there's gonna be some energy um, pushing down the market coming into the, like the first and second week of July. Um, I just don't think the SP 500 has reacted yet. Okay, let me just check one thing here. All right, so this is the Dow Jones transportation, not the Dow Jones industrial. And look at this, oh, Bamsky. This is very typical of what we see when we begin to get divergence. Transportation office, um, often is one of the first things that starts to collapse. And sure enough, look at this huge collapse in transportation. Okay, it happens a lot. Transportation is known to show weakness before the market follows behind it and collapses. So everything is pointing towards the market's going to do a pullback, okay? Let's look at the DJI here real quick, industry. And it did a little bouncy bounce today. This is some old cycles. I'm just gonna guess there's some double cycles here. Eh, you know, I'll keep it in there for now. Um, so a little bounce going on here in the Dow Jones, but it did take a big dive, okay? Then kinda been chopping here. But you can see the Dow Jones is not at all time highs. That was way back here in May. So the Dow Jones has given it up already. But I've seen this time and time again. You got the Dow Jones transportation that's that's uh, pulling back really hard. You've got the Russell 2000 pulling back pretty hard here. Okay, so, and the Dow Jones ind industry has pulled back and kind of just now it's chopping sideways. So it looks like, you know, based on what I'm seeing here, the, you know, possibly a bounce here. But what is this coming out to? Let's see. I got a feeling this is showing us something here. Well, it's July 23rd. Let me just squeeze this up. Does this make, still make any sense? These are some really old cycles I haven't touched in a long time. Some really big cycles. I'm not gonna go through these right now, but let me just remove these. If I had to eyeball this, you know, I see some stuff here, here, here. Yeah, just like right there. See, that makes perfect sense. This cycle somewhere in this area, I'm going to ballpark this. So when does this come out to? What do you know, July 4th. So yeah, they're even on the Dow Jones. See, even the Dow Jones is showing it. The cycle's just everywhere. Bang, bang, bang. Right, you can see where it's come down, right? This is obviously came down here. This came down right here. This came down right here. This kind of gave it up right here. And I don't think we're done here. This is going to come down again. This has July 4th, right on Independence Day. Obviously, the market will be closed. 
um, the Russell 2000, so it's July, I think it's July 10th. Okay, so all, everything's pointing towards the first week of July, maybe the second week. I do expect the SP500 NASDAQ to probably eventually follow. All right. So that's it for the daily chart of the SP500. Let's go look at the um, the trades of the day. Where Was there any trades of the day with that small 20-point 20, 20 range day? Let's go take a look. Was there anything there to, to make money on? Okay, so today was a really tight range day, but I want to show you how you can... <laughs> this happens. There's two things about this chart that really stand out to me. First of all, it was a super tight range day, and it was very choppy. And I've said this many times before. You notice how all these candlesticks have upper and lower wicks? See that? I mean, obviously this one stands out really big lower wick, but look at all these candlesticks. Almost every single one of them has an upper and lower wick. These two, these two, this one, this one, this one, this one, that one even a little bit, this one, this. Look at it. They all have upper and lower wicks. Almost every single one of these. Okay, that's an exception because that was probably, what time was that? Yeah, 8.30, right? The opening bell. Okay. Look how much chop. It just, you start to see upper and lower wicks and all these candles. It's like a lot of it. Okay. That's usually a sign of choppiness. And sure enough, today was very choppy. You can just see it's like all stretched out and choppy. It's stretched out vertically like this, right? You got bodies like that and you got upper and lower wicks, right? But the total range of the day is really tight. Look at this uh, here, did like here, from 42 to 62, right? Maybe it got down to 40, yeah, 42. So 42 to 62, 20 points, maybe just a fraction more. That's it. That was the total range of the day. Super choppy day. All right. So that's number one. I noticed it's real choppy. Now look at all these signals popping off. Look at all these get us plus signals. We don't normally get this. Popping off all over the place. Pop, 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 pop. So there's something I noticed about really small range choppy days. Believe it or not, and people are going to think this is weird, but I've seen this many times before. You can make a lot of money on a 20-point range day. You can actually make more profit in range than you can in the total profit of the day easily on these small days. Let's, let's go through it. Look right here. This was at 7.40 this morning, pre-market, like 10 minutes after pre-market opened up. Okay. Get us plus indicator and they get us candle. Say, hey, wait a minute. I think there's a trade here. It's near the bottom. You wait for it to curl up. Bam, look at this run. It ran, let's just play it safe here, from 45 to 55. 10 points. 10 points right there. Okay, then let's look over here. Here's another one. This was at 1020 in the morning. I mean, you just can't paint this stuff any better. There's the, the uh, plum get us candle, the get us candle, uh, the get us a plus indicator. And look where we're at. Perfect. Look at that. Bam, it starts taking off. Boom, all the way up to the top. This one ran, we could say safely ran from 47 to 55. Okay. We'll call that we'll call that eight points. Okay. Eight points. It even gave you a get us and get us plus indicator at the top and the get us candle at the top, telling you to get out. I'm telling you, man, these short, small range days, I've seen this time and time again, can make huge money. Okay. And then the last one of the day was over here. Happened at 220. It's right there. It's actually really good. Very strong. Look how strong the market was right here. You, you, look at this. Didn't even come down and touch the bottom. It curled up. You know that's bullish when you see that. Look, it never even came down. Not like these. See how these came down and went below the line, went below the line. This one went below the line. This over here went. See how this one didn't do that? Came down, curled up, never touched there. That's a bullish occurrence. Very bullish. Okay, you get to get its plus indicator telling you there's a trade. Boom, you take the trade right at the end of the day here. So from about 55, I'm going to say maybe to like 60. Pretty safely there. You can see the day. For futures trades till four o'clock, we're here at 335. This day's just about over. So let's count up the e this was easy range. This was conservative easy range. 18 and 5 is 23, right? 23. 
Okay, and the total range of the day was from, let's take a look. Total range of the day, which started, this was the lowest point right here. Yeah, right about 42, it looks like 41 and a half. Oh, it was, it was 21 points. <laughs> so I told you. See, the total range today was 21, but you literally extracted 23 out of the market. And that was by conservative, conservative ranges. So you actually had two more points worth of profit on top of the total range of the day. And I see this a lot on these small little range days. Okay, so people think today was not a profitable day. I bet for options traders, there was nothing. I bet options traders, like, it was dead. Like dead, am I right? The futures made big money today. Go do your math. Go find out what 23 points, e an easy 23 points would have given you today. And either micros or, or, or minis for futures. Go do it. Some of you know how to do it. Go to the CME website and calculate it. I already know what it is because like, I've been, like I said, I've been doing this so long. I know that this right here would be, uh, let's see, 1,000 to $150. That's right. It's just half of this for one E mini. And then for one E micro, we can call this. I can't write for some reason right now, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to try. This is a micro. This is a mini for the mini. It'd be, well, it'd be 115 bucks for just one contract. Okay. And of course, if you took two, you'd make $2,300. This is a two timer. If you ever know, ever know how that works, you just take the total range of the day that you can, uh, that you think is, is available for you to trade. And whatever number you come up with, that's always going to be two contracts. And from there, it's easy. You can divide by you can divide by two to get your one contract, or multiply, you know, um, by whatever number you want to get your multiples for contracts. So normally, what I do is just take this, divide by two. Okay, I get my one contract, and then multiply by whatever number of contracts I have. I can do it real quick in my head, right? So money was made today, man. <laughs> for for smart, paying attention futures traders, they made money today. A lot of money. All right. Now you know why I trade futures. Because futures in just about any market is profitable. Okay, o almost any market. The only time uh, futures won't be profitable is when the market's absolutely 100% just sideways. Now, even today, everybody would say this was a sideways market, but you could see in futures still made money. So the market would have to be super tight, like five points like super, super tight range the whole day, like five, seven points, then maybe futures couldn't make any money. Okay. And that's extremely rare to see that. All right. So that was your, that was, those were your trades of the day. Look at this one trade of the day. Okay. Two trade. You could even traded this down here. You could be even realistic. And I didn't even count this one, but this was definitely a shortable trade right here. But with the market busting to all time highs, you know, as a safe trader, I probably wouldn't do that. Okay, but if you're really aggressive, you could get three trades. Okay, that potentially could be another trade right there, four trades. Okay, nothing going on there. And then five trades. But realistically, if you're just taking the long side trades, you've got one, two, three great trades. And if you're gonna be a really aggressive trader, you'd throw these two in there as well for some extra cash. Okay, you might not just stay in these trades as long. Like you might just pick up like a like two or three points and get out because you know it's a mar the market's very bullish, right? That would be, you'd be definitely going counter trend here, which is not a good idea. Okay. But <laughs> if you were super aggressive trader, you could do that. But for sure, these one, three, and five or three trades here are just absolutely easy money. All right. You saw the profit made today. I made money on the Russell 2000. I showed you in the S&P 500 how to make money. There's money being made. Okay. <laughs> and the, the S&P 500 was long today, right? The 20 points we saw was a small day, but it was long. It slowly made its way upward most of the day, just kind of crawling upwards. And there was at least three opportunities, maybe as many as five opportunities in the S&P 500 today. 
and the Russell 2000, I showed you that at the very beginning of the video, how I made money on that using the two hour chart. So guess what? In this one video, you saw how to use uh, a swing trade, which was the Russell 2000 approach and the two hour charts, which is what I did. I did a swing trade. Okay. And then you saw on the SP 500, that was an intraday trade for day traders. Okay. Both in the same video. Okay. That the membership is a, is a, is a I don't want to say stinking, but it is a extremely cheapo $7.99. All right. So I don't know what you're waiting for. The, this, the link for the discord server and the membership is in the description of this video. And it's also the first comment in this video. Okay, I'll pin the comment to the top of the comment section. So read the instructions there, then click on the discord.com link, brings you to get a server, click on server shop, it's gonna bring you to this page. There it is guys, $7.99 a month. But I've shown time and time again, it probably, if you're just patient, in my humble opinion, I think within a few weeks, maybe a few months, if you're just taking your time and being really patient with this, you're gonna start making way more money than you'll ever pay in membership, okay? Um, the streaming charts are down here, All right? The S and P 500 streaming charts, the five minute, the 15 minute, the one hour today, I showed the five minute in this video, but there's two other charts that come with this stream, the 15 minute, and the one hour. Okay. There's also streaming charts for gold. All right. So when you join, just ask, Hey, me, my, I'm Giddis. Hey, Giddis, just ask me in member chat. Where's the link for the gold streaming charts? I'll give it to you. All right. Also every night the emails go out. Monday through Thursday, All right? You get five different charts. You get the daily and the weekly, the S&P 500, and then you get the three two-hour charts with the directional indicator that I showed you at the very beginning of this video where I made my 500 bucks today. Okay, you get those charts for the SPX, the NDX, and the RUT. Really, really nice. Those charts are super handy. I, I've been using those charts for the last couple of weeks. Okay, and well, you saw the fruits, fruits, fruits of the labor, right? made 500 bucks uh that 500 bucks took me like a day and a half 200 to 200 yeah day and a half to two days to make so that was a swing trade okay and i do believe there's more coming in the russell 2000 all right so make sure you when you join that you put your email address in the emails only channel so you can get all the um you can get the night the nightly emails Okay, and usually I give two or three sentences as well in addition to the charts attached to the email about my opinion, what I think the market's gonna do, all right? Um, we got premium symbols here. Every day I put symbols in here. You have future symbols, optionable stocks, shorts, and industries. The industry symbols are really nice, guys. That's gonna help you understand the rotation of money. Some people like to follow the big funds where the money's being rotated so that that those uh, symbols for the industries will help you understand how money's flowing in and out of the industries. So you might want to look at that. Um, a couple days ago, I put in a, a corporate bond here in this channel because I, I picked up some corporate bonds that were, um, I thought were a really good, a good deal. It was a speculative bond though. Um, the rating was pretty decent on it. It was a petroleum company. And um, the price was super discounted, man. I mean, I was bond hunting and found a really good deal. So if, for those that don't know, and I put that in there, so you might want to check it out for those that want to track some opportunities for, for fixed income. I think the, re oh, gosh, the return, I can't remember, guys. I literally think the thing returned like um, over 11% yield to maturity. Crazy return. And it had a decent rating on it. So for those that want to know what that is, <coughs> excuse me, you can go check it out. Listen, this is what I do, guys. I try to profit off the market and I take my profits. I might pay some bills, whatever, pull some out of the brokerage account, put it in savings, whatever I'm going to do, you know, whatever you do with your money in your life is your business. But some of that money I parlay into corporate bonds and I just keep generating fixed, uh, um, keep generating income, right? Because it isn't just about trading. It's also about money flowing in for the rest of your life, all right? And for those I've mentioned before, you might wanna do that inside your 401k or your IRA if you can, okay, this fixed income stuff, okay? Because then you won't be taxed on it, all right? So that's the, that's the best scenario. 
But regardless, you know, that's some of the tactics I used, how to rotate my own personal money to get it to work for me. I don't just keep it in my brokerage account and then go ahead and trade with it again because you're going to take some losses along the way. It's better to parlay your profits into corporate bonds that, that I don't touch. I'll let them make money for me. Some of it goes into my bank account or whatever, and some of it stays in the brokerage account. Okay, that's how you, you know, in my opinion, is a good idea. All right. So there's a lot going on here for the 799, okay? Um, let's talk about the rules. You got to know what the rules are because if you break the rules, then I, I'm not going to get in your face about it and say, well, you didn't read the rules and that's your fault. Okay, the rules are, the refund rules are in here. So read those. So you understand what the refund rules and the re refund policy. Um, there is a disclaimer that I'm not a financial advisor. And no matter what I say on this Discord server or anybody else says on this Discord server, everything is strictly educational purposes only. All right? No financial advice is implied. Okay, guys and gals, you got you got to do your own trading. Okay, there's services here to help you, but you got to do your own trading. Okay, strictly educational purposes. And <laughs> excuse me, the last rule in here is be nice and be kind on the server. Don't come in here and be a troll. Be respectful. I try to keep the environment, um, you know, quiet, safe place to trade, so to speak. Safe place to come and chat and learn and grow and make bank. That's what we're all about here, trying to make bank. Okay, there's of course there's going to be some discussions now and again. It's hard not to discuss some things that are going on in the world, but you know we try to keep it clean. So don't come here and be a troll. If you do that, I'm going to delete your junk. I'm gonna if you get really bad, you might get kicked or banned. So you know don't be that person. Just come enjoy the environment, use the service to your advantage, and make some serious bank. Okay. All right, everybody, hope everybody had a happy trading day. God bless everybody. We'll talk to you all real soon again next time.